Hello! So, today's topic is going to be PTSD, otherwise known as post-traumatic stress disorder. The playlist that I'm putting together for PTSD is going to consist of education, it's going to consist of what to look for in professional treatment, and it's also going to consist of at-home things that you can do to lessen your symptoms. This is very important to understand. PTSD is one of those diagnoses that it is really important to receive professional help from. It's one of those things that the trauma that is experienced by being in the prison system, by having to deal with the prison system, by working in the prison system, it changes the way that your brain operates. Watching people get stabbed, watching people get raped, watching people get assaulted, being raped, being stabbed, being assaulted, seeing people kill themselves, seeing piles and pools of blood around, um, watching people get uses of force done to them, participating in uses of force, uh, participating in any of the violence, participating in assaulting somebody, participating in stabbing somebody, all these things are what are called traumas. The exact definition of a trauma, and I'm gonna read it because I wanna make sure that I get this 110% correct. Traumas are events that make us fear for our safety. These are events that make us feel like we have the potential to die. They leave us hopeless, they leave us feeling helpless, they leave us emotionally shattered. We can have one event that does this, or we can have an accumulation of events that do this. The thing is, is not everybody that experiences a trauma goes on to develop PTSD. There are certain things, there are certain risk factors that people who experience traumas that turn into PTSDs have. One of them is they might have a history of depression and anxiety. If you have a history of depression and anxiety and you experience a trauma, you're falling into a category of being more likely to develop PTSD. You also have people that have a history of physical or sexual abuse as a child. They also have a history of a family history of physical or sexual abuse. The people that develop PTSD after trauma also tend to have um, alcohol and drug issues prior to experiencing the trauma. This is also a very important thing as well. After a trauma, it is normal to feel depressed. It is normal to feel disconnected. It is normal to have nightmares. It is normal to have intrusive thoughts and intrusive memories. The thing is, when it is normal, it starts going down. You don't keep them forever. Over a couple of weeks, over a few weeks, those symptoms, decrease until that memory just becomes a part of you. What happens with PTSD is those symptoms do not decrease with time. For some people, they even get worse with time. So the memory is not just a memory. When we have PTSD, it's not being stored into ourselves as a memory. When we have PTSD, there are certain symptoms that make it PTSD. And one of them is where you have intrusive thoughts, you have flashbacks, you have nightmares about the event. So it isn't like maybe if you're just talking about the event that it brings up these memories. These memories, these thoughts, what happens is, is you might see something that's similar to the event and it brings back all the memories. It brings back the feelings that you had. You re-experience those feelings. You also, if you yourself are physically or sexually assaulted, you can feel that pain in your body. You can re-experience all those physical sensations. That's one of the big symptoms of PTSD is that you had these intrusive thoughts, you had these intrusive memories, and intrusive means that you can't control them. They just come on whenever they feel like coming on. You have no control. There's also flashbacks where you go and you completely re-experience what, what happened during that trauma. You also have nightmares 
where when you fall asleep, these memories haunt you, you replay the event and you wake up. Sometimes some people that have these PTSD nightmares wake up screaming in the middle of the night. Uh, so that's one of the big symptoms of PTSD. The next one that's really um, kind of a hallmark is going to be avoidance and numbing. What happens sometimes for some people with their symptoms of PTSD is sometimes in order to be able to survive the trauma, they forget certain parts of the trauma. And it's where key different elements, and it's not like it goes away, these feelings go away or anything like that. What we do is we avoid certain things. So if somebody says, you know, what happened? Tell me about what happened. We don't want to remember it. So when we're asked to recall, sometimes we will completely forget different parts of the trauma. This does not mean that we have forgotten the trauma or the trauma did not happen. We still will remember the trauma through our body sensations, but we might not be able to recall verbally some of the things that happened during the trauma. And this has to do with the way that our body encodes all this information. When we're going through a trauma, a lot of times, like our verbal is a higher level functioning. We have to be able to concentrate to be verbal. When we are in a fight, flight, or freeze mode in order to be able to survive when we're going through a trauma, a higher level functioning will sometimes turn off. So sometimes our verbal turns off. So we might remember by thinking or feeling, but we can't remember verbally. We can't always remember the stuff on recall that we have gone through because of the way that the trauma was encoded in our bodies and the way that our body responded to the trauma. There's also where we um, avoid certain things that real, might remind us of the trauma. There's also where we start being able, we start avoiding people. Uh, we, we think that they can't understand what we have been through. We feel a sense of disconnection to them. We avoid the things that make us feel good because we don't, some people, they feel a lot of shame and guilt for what they've gone through and they feel like they don't deserve to feel good. So they avoid things that might make them feel good. They also um, believe that the future is limited. They don't see a lot of hope for the future. Their, their, their future viewpoint is very small and limited. It's not like somebody that hasn't gone through trauma. Somebody that hasn't gone through trauma, there's birds, sunshine, happy things happening in life, you know, and then you go through this really dark, shattering event. And all of a sudden, life is not so pretty. It's all of a sudden, there's just storm clouds all the way out to the end of your life. And that doesn't look very nice for a lot of people. It just looks like a lot of pain. The next major symptoms, cluster of symptoms, is something called hyperarousal. What that is, is if you, some people after going through a trauma, they have a high startle response. That means if somebody goes, oh, they go like, oh, and that's a considered a high startle response. There's also hypervigilance, where you keep scanning your environment, keep thinking that things are going to happen. You also increase your irritability. You're not getting any sleep. Uh, you're constantly, your nervous system is constantly on edge. It's because your body is unable to relax. Your body keeps going and replaying these memories. They keep replaying the physical sensations, the emotional reactions, the memories keep going, going, going. And with all that, your body is always on high alert. Your body is always pretty much feeling very miserable because of everything that you have been through with your brain and processing these traumas. And then when you have the traumas that actually physically impacted you as well, if you were stabbed, if you were sexually assaulted, your body also has all that information encoded. So it didn't just go in your brain, your nervous system picked up all that information too. The other big symptom that happens is negative thoughts and mood changes. So there's an increase in irritability. There's difficulty with concentrating. You might not be able to remember as well. Also, there tends to be an increase in reckless behaviors and self-destructive behaviors due to mood changes. There's more um, angry outbursts. There is more aggressiveness. All these symptoms, if you get treatment, can be decreased. I hear a lot of people a lot of times thinking that this is just going to be a part of who they are. And if you get help, if you get professional treatment, it does not have to be a part of who you are. You get to leave this trauma 
stored in you as a memory that doesn't keep intruding into your personal life. PTSD can have a very negative impact on your life. It can make people not want to be around you. It can make your family not want to deal with you. Uh, you can get additional charges if you can't control your aggressive behaviors. Um, if you uh, start using substances and you become reckless, you can harm people. You can harm yourself. You can wind up doing things that will kill somebody else. Uh, so these are all very negative things for, an, for a mental health condition that is treatable. You do not have to suffer. You can get the help. And I'm going to go over that in a future video, what kind of help um, would be most beneficial and the symptoms that the help would be most beneficial for. So if you like this, these videos, please like and subscribe. Also, you can get more information from my website about PTSD and PTSD resources. Uh, that is www. I'm free now what .com. You can also follow me on Instagram and I'm also on Facebook at leaving prison behind. Uh, like I said, the purpose of the PTSD playlist is not to treat PTSD. It is to give information about the diagnosis. It's about to give information about the different types of professional treatment and different things that you can do to lessen symptoms for yourself at home. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section. Uh, I generally go through them and I'm able to answer them um, if it needs an answer. All right, take care.